Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My friends, in today's gospel, we hear the famous parable of the sower. I think it's uh, very appropriate then today that we should pray for all of us, all those people who provide us with food, all the farmers throughout the world, all of those who provide food that, so that we can eat, and we remember in a special way too, all of those who go without, all of those who provide food for them, uh, especially the folks who work in our food pantry right here in Stoughton, St. Anthony's free market, and all of those, uh, we remember them. And through our charity, may we reach out to them. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation 
is groaning and labor pains, even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we await for adoption the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look, but they do not see, and hear, but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear, but not understand. You shall indeed look, but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts, and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower, the seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it. And the evil one comes and steals away what was sown in his heart. The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy. But he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the lure of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
My friends, I'm going to cut straight to the chase. <laughs> Hidden at the heart of today's gospel might be a very simple question. And it's not maybe obvious, but it's hidden at the heart of today's gospel. How much is our love like God's love? Now, Jesus used a very powerful image of the world as a garden, if you will, and God as a sower, sowing the seeds. Now, this image would have been very striking to the average first century Jew of Jesus' time, the people Jesus is speaking to. I'm not sure if any of you have ever been to the Holy Land, but if you have, you'll notice that it contains some of the most uh, unforgiving land around. And I'll put it this way. The garden or the sow, it's very rocky in many places. And in parts of uh, what would be modern day Israel, parts of the Holy Land, it's desert. The gardener or the sower would then tend to sow his seeds very liberally, if you will, knowing that not all of them certainly are going to take. He wouldn't be stingy with the seeds, in other words, because he knows the ground is fairly unforgiving in a lot of places. So instead of trying to imagine him not taking seeds and thinking, well, okay, I'll put one here and I'll put one there. No, just imagine him taking the seeds and just throwing them everywhere. This is God with his love. He knows that love is uh, not going to take, so to speak. His love is not going to take everywhere. Some of it's going to land on the equivalent of pavement, where it produces nothing because the ground is hard and it's not receptive to it. Sometimes it will seem to take, uh, like if you've ever planted a garden. Uh, last year I remember planting the garden, and when the seeds came up and the eggplants came up, I said, I'm going to have 100 eggplants, and I had about 10. <laughs> The eggplants bloom, but then they kind of withered. Sometimes, like the tomato plants, they really take flourishes. Sometimes the seed takes, and sometimes it doesn't. But that doesn't stop God from scattering the seed in the first place. He knows that not all of it is going to take, but he puts it out there anyway. Do we love that same way? Sometimes, my friends, I think we confuse the word love with like or tolerate, but love is something very different. We can love somebody that we don't like, or we can find, uh, love somebody that we find very difficult to tolerate, frankly, somebody we have real problems with. Do we love the way that God does, indiscriminately in a way, and I use that word in a very positive sense. God is very, quote unquote, liberal with his love. He just, it's for everybody. Think of the people in our lives that really rub us the wrong way. Now, it might be somebody we know, might be, a, let's say, a politician, it might even be a church figure. It might be me. <laughs> Think about, I'm going to use somebody else. Think about your favorite politician. I use that word not somewhat uh, to make a joke here. Think of your least favorite politician, is what I'm really getting at. Some of you think that does not add to the unity of this country, for example, but does the opposite. Think about somebody for you who inspires the worst feelings, who you feel has abdicated their responsibility as a public servant. What goes through your mind when you see them on the news or see their picture in the paper? Think about it. Now I want to ask you a question. Do you love them? Not what they did, or what they'd be accused of doing, or what they did not do. Do you love them? Do you love them enough to want their soul to be saved? This is at the heart of today's gospel, my friends. God is sowing his love liberally. Well, prodigally, we could even say. Putting it out there. Because he wants every soul to be saved. He wants every soul to one day be united with his love in heaven. That is the destiny of every person. So he's not going to be stingy. This one deserves it. This one, I don't know if it's going to take or not. This one, well, we'll see. It's, the jury's still out. No, no. Out there for everyone. My friends, I think we often have a very hallmark card view of love, if you will. It's very sentimental or romantic or sweet. That's love of a kind. But more often than not, my friends, that's not really love. That's an emotion. 
Love is something much deeper than that. Love is a state of the soul. Love is willing the good of the other person. True love is deeper than just love as an emotion. and something much harder to practice and live out. But when it does, when we do it, my friends, it can change history, it can change the world, and most importantly, it can save souls. And my friends, can we really call ourselves a Christian without wanting everybody's soul to be saved? We can't say, well, I want these people's soul to be saved, but that person, no. I want them to get what's coming to them. No. If Jesus didn't think that, my friends, can we? Again, hidden at the heart of today's gospel is, do we love like the Lord loves? God's love and ours is sometimes going to fall on rocky soil. We all know people who can be said to have hearts of stone. So sometimes our love is not going to take root. Sometimes, my friends, someone will accept our love, but treat it frivolously. Has this ever happened to you? Where you gave your love to someone, and they thought you were the best thing in the world, and then a few months later, or maybe a few years later, that love withered for lack of roots. And you felt deserted and abandoned. Or maybe uh, the some person that you love fell under the power of addiction, or some bad influence came into their lives, and you feel like you lost them, or they really tested your love, my friends. Do you still love them? Do you still want them to be redeemed? Do you still want them to be saved? It's very easy, my friends, for our love to not be like God's. It's reserved for certain people, and it's dependent on certain circumstances. Or, we think about whether it's going to be returned to us in equal measure. That might be a kind of love, my friends, but it's not God's kind of love. Sometimes our love will fall on that rocky ground, or somebody's going to steal it from us. Or we think it's deep, but the other person we found out later doesn't think that. Jesus is telling us, love those people anyway. Despite our hurts or our sadness, if we, in our hearts, pray for the grace to love them the way that God does, at the very least, it will save our souls. It will save our hearts from becoming that cold and stony ground where God's love can't penetrate. And given the power of God's love, my friends, if we love like that, it just might save their souls too. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate by the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the worlds to come. Amen. United in our love of God, who is love, united in our desire to love like God, we bring our prayers to God. For all bishops, priests, and deacons, may the grace of God nourish them in mind, body, and spirit as they preach the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all who serve in public office. May the Lord grant them hearts of justice and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those burdened with any manner of suffering, may God renew in them a hope that brings consolation and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those responsible for public safety, especially firefighters, police, and military personnel, to come home safely to their families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all Christians may develop an increased awareness of, love for, and devotion to the real presence of Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For priests, especially the priests of our collaborative, without whom we would not have the Eucharist, and for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious and consecrated life, and sacramental marriage, especially from our collaborative. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, the people of the Catholic parishes of Stoughton, for all those who have died, and for the souls in purgatory, May they know the mercy of God in the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in a special way today for all farmers, for all of those who gather the food, uh, who pick the crops, all of those who transport it to us, all of those who make it possible for us to have uh, food on our tables each and every day. And we pray also for those who go without, that through our charity, through our goodness, our kindness, we may reach out to them and assist them. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those intentions we hold in the quiet of our hearts. For these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, remove from our hearts all jealousy, bitterness, fear. Fill our hearts with your love, that we may truly love like you love. Help us to desire all, always, that all souls are saved, all are united with you, one day in heaven. We ask you to hear and answer our prayers, to grant them according to your will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that, when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us. And though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now, you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation. And as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts, as without end, we are playing. Son, Jesus Christ, and whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself, through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his second coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, 
this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Sean our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom and to the hour when we stand before you, saints among saints, in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of your Lord, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, I've been asking everyone to um, do a special prayer throughout the month of July, each and every day, to say three Hail Marys. Uh, the focus of this prayer is for vocations, specifically for the seminarians of the Archdiocese of Boston, who will be ordained uh, priests at the very beginning of August, August 1st, at the cathedral. So this is a joyful day for the Archdiocese, and we all really have a hand in it, don't we? We all uh, really should be praying and working for vocations every day to own it, so to speak. So I invite you throughout the month of July to say three Hail Marys every day uh, for these seminarians in particular, and also for us that we will continue to promote vocations and especially, and this is important, not just with our neighbors, children, and grandchildren, but with our own too. Uh, this is very important. Uh, those of us who have become priests will tell you that uh, in so many cases, the, the, our biggest champion was our parents. Uh, it's certainly true for me and true for many. So uh, may we always have that in our hearts. So please join me in praying a Hail Mary for the priests of the arch, Diocese of Boston, those who will be ordained priests. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord with our lives. Thanks be to God.